Delivery complete. Engage. Delivery complete. It's a go. It's a go. Eagle one. Box three. Gentlemen, this is it. Come on, come on, come on. Virus ineffective. Disengage. Get your people out of there. Disengage. Rear flank. Follow suit. Hold on, command. I want another shot at it. Sir, I strongly recommend you disengage. Eagle one. Fox three. Squadron leaders, fire at will, fire at will, fire at will. We're going in. Squadron leaders, take point. Eagle 6 at 7. Eagle 5 at 3. Eagle 1. Box 2. Eagle 20. Box 2. Well, it appears that Bob Iger and the woke morons running Disney have prevailed against Nelson Peltz. Disney held its annual meeting this week at which a massive proxy fight took place. But exactly what happened during the annual meeting? And where does Disney go from here? Join me, dear viewer, as I dive back into the raging dumpster fire that is Disney. To say that we in the YouTube community are disappointed would be an understatement. But as my pal in the fellowship in the 199, the Angry Badger said, he knew Bob Iger was a lot more powerful than Nelson Peltz. So shout out to the Badger for getting this one right. It was always going to be an uphill battle for Peltz and Tryon Fund Management. The woke activists within Disney's ranks have become very entrenched, like a cancer. The cancer of this planet. You are a plague. And we are the cure. According to Industry Insider and Equity Research Analyst Barton Crockett, Nelson Peltz didn't offer a turnaround plan that, quote, would be something that would get people saying, yeah, we need to get Peltz in there and change things. It's hard for me to believe that Nelson Peltz didn't go in there without a carefully thought out plan. After all, this guy has been running a successful hedge fund for decades, but Disney and Bob Iger had several knives up their sleeves. Now, I won't bore you with the legalese, but apparently what's going on behind the scenes is a full out war. Bob Iger employed Publicis Imagine, a media public relations company, in order to fight Nelson Peltz on every conceivable front. Now hiring a PR firm is nothing new, but what we found out is that Publicis Imagine went after Nelson Peltz hard in the legacy media and even right here on YouTube. Even I got ads telling me to vote for Bob Iger and against Nelson Peltz. They tried to paint him as some guy who knew nothing about the business Disney is engaged in. This smear campaign is par for the course for these cancel culture nutbags that adhere to woke ideology. They did everything they could to maintain their power and protect the power structure that's allowed progressive ideology to infect many people at Disney. Such a media campaign was hard for Nelson Peltz to overcome. Additionally, Bob Iger had the full support of BlackRock and its CEO, Larry Fink, who is a known extreme liberal. Fink is known for having pushed ESG mutual funds that forced companies to adhere to woke DEI and social governance policies in order to secure more funding. Essentially, BlackRock has held the entirety of Western civilization's corporations hostage to his extremist views. From SEC filings, we know that BlackRock owns a pretty big chunk of Disney's stock. And wherever BlackRock is, Vanguard isn't too far behind. And Larry Fink holds tremendous amount of influence over Vanguard and other money managers. They all follow his lead. Given how much Disney stock these investment companies held and how deeply they believe in woke ideology, we knew which way the vote was going to swing. So where does Disney go from here? Well, it seems that there are a lot of projects that have been greenlit. 
I would suspect there will be a green light on the Ray Palpatine trilogy of movies, which inevitably is going to tank hard. So right there, you'll have at minimum a $900 million loss if each movie costs $300 million to produce. On the Marvel front, I think Kevin Feige may have realized how badly he burned himself on the MCU debacle. We've already heard that they're retooling and trying to turn the ship around. But they're still casting a chick to play Silver Surfer, so Marvel and the MCU's fate is yet to be determined. But even though Bob Iger won this battle, it doesn't mean he's out of the woods just yet. He still has to contend with lawsuits from other investors, as well as a high-profile, wrongful termination suit brought forth by Gina Carano and backed by none other than Elon Musk. And the Nelson Peltz fight has not been cheap. Disney and Tryon Fund Management have spent more than $60 million trying to convince investors to go for their side. And it was always a win-win for Nelson Peltz. Even though he lost the proxy fight, his message has been sent to Disney to shape up and get their house in order. The activist investor fight has caused the stock price to increase because people believe a message is being sent. And they're hopeful that the message will lose out. So it appears that Disney will continue to be a gigantic dumpster fire for a bit longer. But it's not all that bad. Unlike Big Daddy j Pow, Disney can't mint tendies. Eventually, the money will run out. And it's exactly at that point that they'll abandon the Wokesters and clean up their own house. Brace yourself, kiddos. It's going to be a bumpy ride. But what do you guys think of all this? Will Disney suffer more financial losses? And what will happen to the woke activists at the company? Please do let me know down below in the comments. And as always, hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that subscribe button. And I'll see you in the next one.